Hi everyone, it's Jenny B from Jenny B Studios. That's Jenny with an I. And I'm going to bring you another landscape pastel painting. So hey guys, if you enjoy watching someone paint or you'd like to learn a little bit more about the procedure, come and join us. This time I've done something a little bit different. I've done a watercolour on an Archer's 250 GSM paper. And now I've added a bit of gesso. Now this was designed for pastel. It dries fairly clear. However, I did layer three layers of this pastel all over the painting. And now that it's dry, we can go paint. The first thing I'm going to do is come into those clouds and just add a little bit of warmth. And as I do that, I just slightly touch it down. Each stroke is very soft. After all, it is clouds. And we don't have to be too hard with pastel. So that's the wonderful thing. Bringing in a little bit of light. So it's not a white that I use. It is actually a light um, a light warm colour. I want to add a bit more definition to the clouds so I've brought in a little bit of the warm grey and now I'm adding my blue. Now the blue is obviously not the right colour, it is the right tone, not the right colour. So I'm going to intermix that and break it down a little bit with another colour over the top. In order to make it blend I'm actually going to use a circular motion. Now if at any time you'd like to slow this video down, up in the top right hand side of your screen there should be three little buttons. You can go there. Uh, if you press that on you can go to playback speed. While that's all softening, I just want to say a big, big thank you to all my subscribers. You mean the absolute world to me. Thank you. All your support just encourages me to make more and more videos. Um, so if you'd like to join us, don't hesitate. Hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or you can catch up with me on Facebook or on uh, Instagram. My handle's there is jennybstudios.com. Softening those clouds down again and you can see that I'm just using a, a slight tapping motion as I go. And that's just on the edge of the mark. Guys, I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to give a really huge thank you to Alison, Haley, and Merrill, um, who have all made purchases from me this month. And, you know, again, thank you so much. Oh, oh, it's just so wonderful to be able to share your, share your art with people. And I really do appreciate it. As I'm coming in, I'm actually using those big broad strokes again, a slightly deeper colour than I had in the sky. Again, it's not exactly the colour that I want it, so I'm going to intermix it. Now this mountain is part of the background, so I don't want to put too much emphasis on it. I do want it to be nice and soft but I still think we need to um, emphasize some of the shadows that we see there. <clears throat> Sorry you have to forgive me I've got a really bad cold. 
um, yeah so again I'm just smudging those colors down um, and working it into the tooth of the paper so it has that really nice soft feel to it and as I come through the top you can see that um, just the faintest of shadow lines are coming through and now I'm just adding in some dark so again not a black it's just a dark um, it's a bluer color because anything that's sitting in the distance tends to have more of a blue hue to it and I'm just lightly touching up the side so we have such incredibly beautiful landscape out here in the Hawkesbury and it's a pleasure to paint it so I'm just adding in some indicator marks really just to let you know let the eye know that there are some trees in here where the lights hitting and I just tap those down I don't want to obliterate the the marks that I make when I'm doing this um, but I do want to soften them so just by tapping lightly it just pushes that back into the tooth and into the background so how easy and wonderful is that now that the backgrounds finished or just about finished I'm going to slowly start to make my way to the midground and the midground portion is where you see that line of trees at the back there Now originally I had a telegraph pole in there and I'm taking that out totally using my artistic license you can see how much richer the darker marks are as I come forward and again because these trees are in the background I just want to indicate their shape we don't need to see every leaf on the bush um, this is more of an impressionistic painting anyway so I just want to indicate their shape if we have too much detail it can be really confusing for the eye so use the kiss theory and just keep it simple look how beautiful and colorful that is Now if you don't know what pastel is, pastel is a very soft, highly pigmented product. Um, people do refer to it like a chalk-like product. Um, soft pastel is not chalk. Um, and it is one of the oldest forms of painting. And often it's still around today. And for a long time in our history, it was actually the most popular form of painting working that midground further towards the foreground I'm just indicating some of those grasses and the you know the burnt grasses just popping it in and pushing it down again I want you to take note too how I've worked the base of these trees as I pop the darks in because often trees are darker at the, the bottom than they are at the top so and I'm just adding the mid color in there as well
when I get to the road I'm actually using quite a warm um, tonal range here which will offset the cooler range that will be on the left hand side Now the way that I've laid the gesso on, I've allowed some texture in the foreground here which helps to give you that feel of a paddock, the rough ground and grasses. And when I'm considering over here, I uh, these two scrub bushes are actually right in the foreground of the picture. So again, I want to um, bring in some earthy colours here, which is more pleasing to the eye. And I also want to add in the shade of a gum tree that was behind me on the right hand side so I'm going to walk, work towards those two elements bringing in my mid-tones here just stroking it through and you can see how blue the foliage is on those bush trees versus the right hand side where it's quite a, a warm green Often when you see my hand pause like that, it's <laughs> it's um, my mind thinking away. <clears throat> now just because these trees are actually in shadow doesn't mean that they won't have a bit of light on them. So now I'm just working on those shadows for the, the big gum tree. I don't know about you, but I think this is a pretty darn wonderful view. Imagine waking up to this every morning. How lucky you can be. Now you can see I'm actually pulling some colour in there. And these are sort of a, a mid-light. I'll go one shade lighter. Now I'm just indicating foliage rather than putting in every leaf that's on the tree. And just tapping the side of my mark to stop to soften it. Working over here to the right and the left is these foreground grasses.
coming back again indicating some of the highlights on these trees in the shadow and you can see how much cooler those highlights are and again just tapping down the side of the mark as I work so in when we talk in pastel terms we actually talk in instead of saying a brush stroke we say a mark so I thought I'd just clarify that for you by softening the mark you can see it I think a little bit better on these trees you can actually your, your eyes kind of tricked into feeling the turn of the the roundness of the trees over here I'm going to indicate a little farm and you know I can just do a couple of touches with the pastel sticks so pastel comes in both sticks and pencil format If you have any questions please let me know I'm just popping in or just indicating some of the sheep that were on the farm that day and in the end I use my artistic license to do a little bit of changing on those two trees by the road so guys I really hope you enjoyed the video once again thank you all for your support if you're interested in this painting it is available bye